What's up everybody? Welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Josh, aka Safe Home Outdoors. Today I got a special video for you guys. I just spent $530 on Tackle Warehouse and we're gonna be unboxing it right here, right now. Come on. dropping everything all right y'all now that i got everything organized let's get into what i was most excited about is these trailers right here trailers or swim baits it's kind of like minnow style baits i'm not even sure um what to call it but these are these are some from crush city this is the jacob wheeler ones i also got some from hog farmer spunk shad i believe tactical bassin matt allen and tim little recommend these in some of their videos and then mark dennis jr Said that his boy Jacob Wheeler uses these and you know he's been winning everything so I had to get some of these. I haven't tried any of these yet. These are great colors. I got the blue gizzard and uh, spunk shad albino right here. I also got the five five and a half inch blue gizzard. I also have the four and a half inch electric shad. The green pumpkin in the crush city version and the black and blue fake in crush city. My first thoughts are they look really good. They're, they're really similar, but there is a difference in the two Hawk Farmer and Crush City. Crush City kind of like shaped like a fluke, as you can see, kind of like rectangular body, and then kind of more like squared off in the front. And then the Hawk Farmer uh, Spunk Shad kind of reminds me of a Kitek. Like all the, all the ridges inside and then kind of like the rounder head. So this is the Spunk Shad and three and a half inch. That tail is crazy, look at this. I can just imagine you put this on a small chatterbait or if you used to just put a little jig head on there. Look at this. My hand is barely moving too. But imagine if you were shaking your pole. That's crazy. This looks perfect as like a little minnow or something. I see why it's been killing the tournaments lately. This is the Crush City version. That tail, that action is still crazy. It's shaped a little differently, but that tail is still moving like crazy. Super excited for these. I've seen people taking over on these on all the bass tournaments and everybody using them on the Chatterbait trailers and I can't wait to try them out personally. I may win a little overboard. I probably shouldn't have ordered six different packages, but different sizes, different colors, two different brands. I think we'll be able to test them out pretty good. Can't wait to use these. All right, let's see what's next, y'all. I can't pass this up. It was a spring sale, so I had to get some of the staple. You know, everybody has these in their tackle box. Some Sankos, just loaded up a little bit. Baby bass, favorite color, black and blue. I actually ran out, so can't go wrong with that. I haven't tried these yet, but my boy Christian was killing them one day, and I knew I wanted to get my hands on them. I just never decided to place an order, but Tackle Warehouse was having that spring sew, so what better time than when it's on a, on a discount? I've never used them, but check these out. They just look so funky, but I don't see why they wouldn't work. They're gonna fall down, they're gonna wiggle a little bit too. Great colors. Not, not scented, but it smells just like the Senkos, a little bit of salted, kind of just plastic. Excited to try these out. Also got some three inch Yama Senkos for Ned Riggs. They were on sale, so I had to get a couple. Move on from that. You know I live in California, so the Delta's right in my backyard. We also have Clear Lake up north that's a couple hours away. So you know we're gonna be punching soon, and majority of the time when I'm punching or I use a crawfish trailer, I'm using a Rage Crawl, either in the regular version or the smaller version. It's usually a variation of one of these two in different colors as well. I use other things as well, but I just feel like these resemble a crawfish the most. So I really like them. This was kind of just a stock up. It wasn't nothing new or something new I want to try. I just, I know I'm going to use a lot of them. So I decided to buy some extra. Let's move on to the next thing. The Chatterbait isn't anything new or exciting, but it's definitely something I like to keep stocked up in my tackle box. We have the Delta and Clear Lake right next to us. So there's a lot of vegetation. I'm always fishing around grass. Definitely one of the key things in my arsenal. I've actually never used the custom Chatterbait. I've always used the Jackhammer or the original ch Chatterbait. But these were on sale just like everything else here besides the rod. So I had to stock up on some. I got some pretty cool colors, man. I got the Spring Crawl. Never bought this color, so I'm excited to try it out this year, on a, especially on the Delta. I got the basics to go to. I got the green pumpkin and the black and blue. Can't go wrong with these. This is for the natural clear water and this is for the stained water. And then for the ones that I use almost year round, I use kind of like the white or the shad pattern uh, chatterbaits. These, these always work for me no matter where I go. I have confidence in this white or white and gray, white and light blue. And I'm going to pair with the Spunk Shad or the Freeloader from Crush City. I'm super excited to try these out this year. Now that we got the chatterbaits done, let's move on to the next thing. 
So I do fish a spinnerbait and a chatterbait a lot, but I don't actually use an underspin too often. This is something I want to get better at this year and something I do plan on throwing a lot more often. So I do got a couple different ones here. I have a Blade Runner swim bait head. I plan to pair this up with a Kitek. Should be no problem. Should look pretty good. I also have the Weedless Fish Head Spin. It has a big, big weed guard right in front of here and a big blade. I think it's going to do great on the Delta, especially with so much grass at the Delta. It's going to come through everything really nice. At least I hope so. I like this. I like the head of this fish head spin. The eye looks really good. The paint looks really nice too. It's really, really nice shiny on top. It has some sparkles on there. That blade looks sharp. I like the split ring on here. I like how it wobbles really, really freely and easily. This looks really good, man. I'm really excited to use this one. Also, I have two underspins from Gamakatsu. This is my favorite hook brand, so I had to get some. First off, so they look really good. The, the hook looks pretty thin. But they look really sharp. I trust this hook brand a lot, so I know they're going to be sharp. These are actually a little different. The blade is actually connected by a little wire versus the fish head spin by split ring and a swivel. So I'm excited to see what the difference is in those. Maybe the action is a little different. Either way, I'm super excited to try these out. Can't wait to use them. Let's move on to the next thing. I got two new tackle boxes. Well, not really new. I've used one before. The Plano Edge box I haven't used yet, but the Spro box here. This box is really cool. So this is the Spro reversible box. It has two latches, one on this side, one on this one. It has seven slits on each side. Seven on this side and seven on this side. It's perfect for my jerk baits. It keeps it really secure. I use a lot of Mega Bass, so they're $25 a piece. I don't like it when I put my Mega Bass jerk baits inside my box and they rattle around and then you have to put a bunch of them together and all the hooks are scratching up on each other. For these, you can fit two inside each slot and they fit pretty snug. The hooks won't scratch up on each other uh, too bad. So this is the Plano Edge bladed jig and jig box. I'm super excited to try this out because I have a lot of chatterbaits, especially now with this order too. I have even more and I don't want them to get rusted. Some of the old boxes I've used, some of my chatterbaits, I don't know why they rust really fast. I try to dry them out and leave them out too, but I don't like the boxes that I, I have currently. So I'm going to try this out. First thoughts are a lot of spacing here actually. I only plan to use this for chatterbaits, so I don't I don't care if there's not enough space for weed guards because I won't have any. I like how it has this water wicking thing. I don't know how well it works, but I'm excited to try it. Yeah, there's another tackle box, man. This latch is also pre pretty good. It fits pretty tight right there, and it pops off pretty easy, too. It pops off really easy, comes off, and I like how it snaps shut really hard. That's really secure. I got high hopes for this, especially since it's 40 bucks too. All right, y'all. It's time to get into it. Let's get into this. Ooh. I don't even know if I got enough space over here. Here it is, y'all. Super excited to try this out, man. This is gonna be my dedicated drop shot rod. This is a medium light, seven foot fast action. This is the Dobbins brand, the Champion XP lineup. All of my rods are basically Dobbins Champion XP. This is. This is what I like to use. It fits my price point and I like the action on it. It's just like, I feel like it's top tier. You get so much for the, for the amount that you're paying. I really love this brand. You know, they have a great community on Facebook and they it always, it always holds up and never lets me down. Every single rod I buy has been perfect. It, even if it's outside of this Champion XP lineup, I got, I got one Caden and I also have a Fury as well. And they're both, they're both perfect. So this actually wasn't on a tackle warehouse sale, sadly, because this was the most expensive thing. But I was looking for a drop shot rod, a dedicated drop shot rod for a while. I have a spinning setup for Senkos already, and I just wanted one for a drop shot specifically, so I don't have to use one spinning rod for both. I can have both a Senko and a drop shot rod tied on at the same time. I've never used a medium light, but I'm super excited to try it because this tip really feels like it's super sensitive, and I bet it could just cast the drop shot like a mile. Away. I love how right under the, the description of the rod, they write what the rod is intended for. No drop shot isn't on here, but I think it's gonna be perfect for, for drop shots the way I fish them. I think they paid a lot of attention to this rod, to this lineup, and this detail is just insane to me. And I, I love this lineup, so I got it. I had to get another one. All right, guys, that's gonna be the end of this video. I had a bunch of fun unboxing this, and I really appreciate you stuck around and watch everything. I can't wait to get back on the water and use these and make more videos for you guys. As always, catch you next time.